Now that you've completed topic 4-7, two column proofs, we're going to move into proofs, but we're going to add a step to it. And that step is called CPCTC, which actually stands for congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So again, we're going to discuss what congruent triangles is. Um, again, this is going to be a triangle with corresponding angles. and sides congruent. And again, if you wanted to write that down, this is what that meant. We said corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And again, this is why it has an abbreviation. This is C, P, C, T, C. So corresponding parts of tr congruent triangles are congruent. So if they tell us that triangle cat is congruent to triangle dog, list all of the congruencies. Well, we just said that if the triangles are congruent, then both the sides and the angles are congruent. So we said angle A is congruent to angle O. We have angle T congruent to angle G. And we have angle C congruent to angle D. For the sides, we have DO congruent to CA. We have AT congruent to OG. And we have CT congruent to DG. I don't know if y'all can hear the monitor or not. That would be Don Carson. So how many congruencies did we find? Well, there's six of them. But this question says, how many congruencies does it take for us to show that the two triangles are congruent? Well, if you remember, we've been working with angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, 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 side. But in all these cases, it only took three to prove that they were congruent. But once I proved they were congruent, it says how many additional congruencies then could we figure out? So if I had side, 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 I also could still prove that these three angles were congruent. So there's three extras that we could prove congruent once we know the triangles are equal. So we're going to use that information in order to do one more step on our proofs. So let's look at example two. We're going to start just like we did last time. Remember, we start with our first given. So we would say RZ bisects angle TRS. So that means RZ is an angle bisector. Remember, bisect means to cut in half. So RZ, this, is cutting TRS in half. So we should know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And again, this is given. And then we just said angle 1 congruent to angle 2. And this is our definition of angle bisector. Then it says angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Now again, I know they look like 90 degrees, but we can't assume. So we're just going to mark angle 3 congruent to angle 4. 
and again we write it down and this would just be given. So, so far we have one congruency, two congruencies, but we're out of givens. So now we would need to go back and look for vertical angles, shared side or shared angle. In this case, we do have a shared side right here in the middle. So on this, we would say RZ is congruent to RZ. And again, if we were to flip this triangle down, they would be going in the same order. So then here we would just put reflexive. So that's our third congruency. And then our last step on the old problems was to go ahead and state that the triangles were congruent. So we would go ahead and put triangle, let's do RTZ congruent to triangle R and then go down to S and back to Z. And again, this would be angle, side, angle. So now that I know the triangles are congruent, can I say that S is congruent to T? Absolutely, because if the triangles are congruent, then these corresponding angles are congruent. I could also prove that RT was congruent to RS or that SZ was congruent to TZ. Whatever this last one is, once we know the triangles are congruent, we can now state any of the three other congruencies. So angle S is congruent to angle T, and then we would say CPCTC because the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay. Again, this is the only thing that's going to be different. That's why it says up here, this will require you to go one step further, just because this only comes after our proof statement. Good. So your next question, example three. Whoa is kind of the same thing now that we broke the camera and it fell. No, I'm just kidding. It's not broke, I hope, but let's get that set back up. All right. So this one is a lot like the one that you just did. Um, so I'm going to let you guys do that one. Um, but you do need to look for um, reflexive property. Um, so you're going to have some vertical angles here. Make sure when you're naming those angles that you don't say angle M to angle M. You need to say AMC to BMD or something like that. So see if you guys can try that one. Um, and I think you should be good with example four. But I want to do example five with you. So let's look at example five. See if I can get it kind of leveled back off here now that I dropped the camera. Having all kinds of problems today. So the first thing we've got BC, this one right here, is parallel to AD, this one right here. And then we have AB, this one, parallel to CD, which is this one. So the parallels seem to be the ones that you guys struggle with the most just because you don't remember your alternate interior angles and those kinds of things. Um, so I kind of wanted to go over this one with you. So let's go ahead and write down our first given. BC is parallel to AD. And then I'm going to use a different color just so we can see it. Um, here's BC. And here's AD. So then if I use this as our transversal, I want you to notice that purple to purple creates this angle here and this angle here. So we can't call these angle C and angle A because there's two angle A's and two angle C's. So when we go to write down our congruency, 
we're going to say angle C to A to D is congruent to, let's see, we started at C, so then we would have to say A to C to B. And again, that's our first congruency. Oop, and I didn't write our reason, sorry. This is given. And then this reason would be our parallel lines, alternate interior angles congruent. So then our second statement, we'd go ahead and write it down because we got a congruency. So AB is parallel to CD. Again, this is given. And now I'm going to use a different color just so you can see. So now if this is AB and this is CD and now this is my transversal, pink to pink creates this angle and this angle. So now notice we're actually listing the same congruencies. It's A to C, but now it's backwards. So our second congruency would be that angle BAC is congruent to angle DCA. And again, this is the same reason, parallel lines Notice we created another set of alternate interior angles. So anytime you see parallel lines, you're looking for these alternate interiors or corresponding. Anytime that you see bisect, you're looking for congruent angles or congruent segments. Anytime you see midpoint, it's the same thing. So now we go for our third congruency. We're out of given, so that means we need a reflexive side or vertical angles. And in this case, we do have a reflexive side here in the middle. So we would say segment A to C is congruent to segment C to A. Again, if I were to redraw or try to flip these around so that they look the same, these two would actually switch places. So again, this is our reflexive property. And so now I could state that the triangles were congruent. So triangle, let's go B, A, C, is congruent to triangle B goes with D. So we would say D, A goes with C, and then C goes with A. And again, this is by angle side angle. So then the last step is can we prove that angle B is congruent to angle D? Well yes, because if these triangles are congruent, the corresponding angles are B and D. So we could say angle B is congruent to angle D, and again this is C, P, C, T, C. So the only thing that's changing from the last set of notes that you guys took is this last step. So see if you guys can complete the rest of the examples um, on your own. Six does have parallel lines, so remember you're gonna be trying to find those alternate interiors. And then angle seven, or example seven on the back goes back to a midpoint. And then you are gonna have to use a shared side. So if you have any questions or need any help, just let me know. And Carson says goodnight.